It's been a, an extra long day today, isn't it? Meeting early this morning and all the food and chatting together. You might think, oh, I feel I'm sort of like at 10%, isn't it? I'm tired. But this song says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We've still got breath, something we still have, so we can use it to praise Jesus. And what a day it's been, isn't it? Celebrating with people who've been baptized, trusting in Jesus, family members here, time together just remembering what God has done. So we'll, we'll keep praising him. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that, We thank you for that command you give in the Psalms. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We thank you it's right. Lord, you've given us the breath we have. And you've given us that breath to, to praise you, Lord. To show off who you are, how amazing you are. So, Lord, even if we feel like we're out of breath. Or we're struggling for breath. Help us to use it, Lord, to praise you. We just thank you for everything you've done. Amen. I'm going to carry on uh, singing. And we're reminded today, wasn't it, as we shared in those baptisms, it's Jesus that's got hold of us. And it's such a comfort, isn't it, that sometimes we do let go of him, but he promises he will never let go of us. He will hold me fast.
Satisfied, he will hold me fast. Raise with him to endless life, he will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight, when he comes at last, he will hold me fast. voices. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. Father, we thank you for that awesome truth. Please keep speaking to us this evening now as Brian comes, Lord. Please fill him with your spirit. Help us to hear your voice, we pray. Amen. Evening. Yeah, I'm going to do the reading as well, just because it's really just one verse. Um, maybe on that, it's Galatians 2.20. Let me just read it to you. It says there in 2.20, Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's just pray. Father God, please speak to us this evening, Lord God. Please help us to know true freedom that comes through Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I pray that in this room that you would just begin to set people free, not because of some wishful thinking or some sort of dream, but because, Lord, you, that's why you've come. You've come to set people free, Lord God. Lord, but help us to know that that freedom only comes by faith in Jesus, Lord. It's only by trusting you, Lord God. And Lord, help us to give up our own efforts to try and change ourselves, fix ourselves, uh, to please you, Lord God. It truly is a waste of our time, Lord God, to do that. But Lord, when we just trust you with everything, then we have freedom, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So, so I, do, I do think this message um, can give you freedom tonight. Um, not because it's, somebody's preaching it, because it's God's word. Uh, in the book of Galatians, in the first chapter, Paul goes out his way to say, you need to know that the message is not from man, it's from God. And that changes the, 
the, the whole ball game. Um, and you maybe think to yourself, you know, you, that thought of freedom, maybe you've been in, enslaved to things so, for so long, the thought of freedom is like, oh, that's in the distant future. Or you might think, uh, which the Galatians did, you might think to yourself, well, what have I got to do? What have I, what have I got to do to be, really, to be really free? How can I be free? And that's what the, the Galatians were. If you read the Galatians, in one way, they were, they were a headache of a church. They, were, they, they are a headache of a church because uh, Jesus uses Paul to plant this church. And, and they had the gospel so clearly given to them. They were so, the, the gospel was so clear to them that he says, it was like Jesus was crucified in front of you. So it's like when the, the message came to them, message came to the Galatians, Paul says, it was like Jesus was dying in front of you and all of you knew that this was the only way to be saved. He said, it was that clear to you, you that Jesus has come, he's died for you, that if you give your life to Jesus, he'll save you, he'll rescue you, he'll transform you and, and now basically enjoy that new life. You're a new creation. And the, but the problem with the Galatians is they never, they never stuck with that. I am a, to just kind of give you a couple of examples to, to help you understand what was going on with them. It's like Jesus came and took off their chains. He, come and he took the chains off. But the Galatian church put the chains back on. And a, you can do that as a Christian. That's why the, the, Paul, the, the Holy Spirit says to, through Paul, I'm perplexed about you. I'm perplexed because you had the gospel. And it goes on in Galatians. It keeps repeating a point that's saying you really did have an amazing experience. There was an amazing experience that was, that was profound. But he said, but I'm perplexed in how you're applying that experience. I'm perplexed in how you're, you're embracing this freedom. And it was like for them, um, that they Jesus took the chains off and then they put them back on. And it was like, it was like, more, another way to kind of think of it, it was like Jesus... Your Christian walk is not Jesus taking you out of a hole and then he says, bye, you're on your own. It's, it's not like that. He gets you out of the hole, he keeps you out of the hole, and he brings you into an amazing new life. And the Bible says that that's all done by faith. And that's why the title of this message, it, you've got two options. You've got human effort or you've got, you've got faith. You've got human effort or you've got faith. And the Galatians, they, they start off with faith. But they start going into human effort. In other words, and it's, it's in our nature because we like the challenge. We don't, in one way, we, um, you know, we, we think that we're more, there's a verse in 6.3 I think that really sums up why they, they took this, this bait. So it was like Jesus took them out the hole and it was like the Galatians were saying like, okay, I'll take it from now, Jesus. I'll sort my life out now. You've got me out this horrible situation. Now I've got the strength to keep going and keep changing. And it says in 6.3, um, if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Because there's a tendency to think, you know, I'm something. And I got myself into a, a deep hole and all of a sudden, um, Jesus has got me out and, you know, but I really can make it, isn't it? I really can change. It was just, I couldn't change in that season. Well, being a Christian is not like that. You can't change no matter what you do, no matter how much um, strength you put into it. And Jesus has to come to you. And the, and the good news is, what, so what does, God, how, what does God want you to get to? Where does the place that he wants to get to? Because there is a place that will bring freedom. There is true freedom that will come into you. But it's not going to be by human effort. It's going to be by faith. You are going to have to just trust the Lord you, and and the, the obstacle for trusting the Lord is your own human effort. If I could put it this way, you are the last hurdle to your own freedom. You're the last hurdle. And that's why you're so perplexed. You ever feel like that as a Christian? You're so perplexed. I know he's come to set me free. Jesus is going to deliver me. But I'm perplexed because I, it, it, for them, they were putting on the chains again. And they were doing it in different ways. And, and for us, we have ways that we're doing it. They were doing it in different ways. They were going back to the law. They were going back to behavior and saying, if I do this and do this, God's blessing is going to come. And it says for the Galatians, they got set free by Jesus and they were, they're observing 
days, seasons, and even years. And they almost like say, like, I, if I could do it like this, it's almost they put a management system into their own freedom. A management system. Because is it? is, we're like that, aren't we? We're like, all right, you, you've given me the gospel, Jesus, but now let me put this management system where I'll, I'll be able to get myself free. And Jesus has to strip you right back and say, no, you have to come right back to the place which Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. When you say, I no longer live, it's not as if you physically die. It's just, I'm going to give up all my efforts to change myself. It's, it's not saying that you don't want to change. Paul said that, I really want to change. I, I see what being a, a good person is, and I really want to be like that. I see what being a godly person is, and I say, I really want to do that. But the problem is you don't have the power to change yourself. You want to change yourself, but you don't have the power to change yourself. And it's not until you say, right, okay, well, how do I change? How do I have this freedom? Um, and that's, and when you get in Galatians 5, it talks about the, when you walk in the Spirit, then the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And it's ultimately, you're saying, it comes by faith. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to give up my own efforts and, and trust Him trust him but when you start to go back into your, your human effort so it's like when you it's like you get saved and you trust Jesus and then you say okay Jesus I'll take over now and I'll start to do it all it, um, it, the Bible says that that starts to become a human human effort and when you start doing like that it's all, it even uses this word you, you foolish Galatians what a way to talk to a church isn't it you f f foolish become a foolish church he's not putting you down and saying how, how is it you got so desperate, you needed Jesus, and then all of a sudden, you think you're so strong now, and say, I can take over now, and I'll, I'll man management my own freedom. And, um, and the danger is when you do that, the, Galatians says, you start actually alienating yourself from Christ. You start alienating yourself from the grace of God. Because you're like, basically, saying, well, I don't need the grace of God. I need it to be saved, but I don't need it to, to live and to be kept. And actually, you, it's like, in one way, I, I picture it like this way. It's like Jesus' hand is there, and he's saying, I'll come to save you. And what you've got to do is take hold of that hand, and you've got to keep holding that hand. But it's like they, what the Galatians do is like they take hold of Jesus' hand and say, get me out of this, and then they start looking to their own hand. And ultimately, when you start doing that, it's almost like saying, well, you are on your own then. And the Bible calls that, it says it in Galatians, it was, it's a miserable principle, isn't it? It's a basic principle, a miserable principle. Because everything relies on, on your efforts. And he says to the Galatians, he looks at them, he looks at a people that he knows that the gospel's being preached to. He says, you know you've got to trust Jesus with everything. You don't just trust Jesus to get out of the hole, you trust Jesus to stay out of the hole. It's a, a whole package. You trust him now and you trust him forevermore. And he, he says to them, oh, you foolish Galatians, he says, who has bewitched you? He says, it's almost like someone's put a spell on you. You, 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 you embraced faith, you embraced trust in Jesus, and then all of a sudden, you've built up this management system of trying to maintain your own salvation. And it causes a perplexity of when, when ultimately, not that God is perplexed, but he speaks through Paul, isn't it? A perplexity, what are you doing? That's not how you've come to, come to know Jesus. And he says in 3.1, before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by the means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish or complete your goal by human effort? He's saying you started in the Spirit. You start saying I'm trusting. And he's saying, are you going to now try and complete this goal by human effort? And what is, the, what is the goal? It's to be free. It's to be set completely free. And God said, you, you will begin to, to switch hands. And say, well, it's all going, you're going to look at your hand. How do I get myself out of this hole? How do I do that? And actually, it, it, it brings you into a place of what Galatians says, is you actually go back into slavery. You actually willingly put the chains back on you. Because the only, because the only way the chains came off you in the first place was through Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus says to you, I'll, I'll save you. I'll rescue you. That's not a one-time thing. He said, I am rescuing you. I am saving you. You will trust me. You will put your faith in me. For the, for, you live by this faith, it says. You don't, have a, you don't have a faith moment. You live by the faith. And 
and you, you, then you're going to have this, this freedom. And Paul, Paul gets it right here, but the Holy Spirit gets it right. And he says, it's, it's got to, you've got to get to the place where you basically say, I no longer live now. And it says there in verse 228, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for, for me. And it, it, you, you get to that place where it's, your effort doesn't have to just diminish. You have to give up completely your effort of trying to set yourself free. You have to give it up completely. I cannot change myself, no matter how hard I try. I cannot transform my heart. I cannot make myself right with God, no matter what I do, no matter what I say. And, it, and what you say, when I no longer live and I've been crucified with Christ, you're saying, I, I die to all the faults of change in myself. And, and, you're, and the choice is, is it, is it gonna be human effort or is it gonna be faith? Am I going to just trust him and believe him and follow him and that he is going to do what he says? That's basically where your your faith is. God will do what he says. He'll do what he's promised. He's promised to rescue. He's promised to transform your mind. He's promised to give you a new heart. He's promised to take you to heaven. He's promised to give you the Holy Spirit. He's promised to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. He's promised you, you, your faith relies on the promise. That's what you've entered into. You've not relied, not entered into a system, a man management system of trying to, to, to get this blessing or maintain this blessing through human effort. Um, and and you, you, you not only enter by faith, but you live by this faith. It's, I'm going to keep trusting God. He's, he's going to do what he's promised. He's promised me, come to me in my darkness. He come to me in my lost, lostness. And he began to speak into my heart. And he began to promise me all these amazing, think of all the things that God promised you, isn't it? I'll rescue you, I'll get you out of that. I'll, I'll change your heart, I'll change all these things. I'll do it, I will do it. And, and your, your part is to trust that. Your, see, it's not about your promise to God, it's about God's promise to you. And your part is you just trust Him. I am gonna completely trust you. And I'm gonna completely rely on you. And, and it's actually good news when you say, I, I no longer live. I'm no longer gonna to strive to try and fix my situation, to change my situation. It doesn't mean that your situation won't change. In fact, when you, God fills you with his Holy Spirit, you will put more energy and effort and more love in into it than you ever did. But it'll be God's Spirit working through you. It'll be the wisdom of Christ. It won't be like you go on a holiday. In fact, you, you'll engage more in what you need to do. You'll, you'll reconcile more. You'll res- there'll be more restoration. There'll be more energy. There'll be more hard work at work. There'll be all of those things. Because it's Christ that lives in you. And he, he's going to ch- transform you. And he goes on to say, May I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and, and I to the world. I, I like that. It's, it's the, the, Jesus Christ, who the world has been crucified to me. He said, I'm not going back there, but also I've been, it says, but I to the world. It's that both, both efforts. I'm not going to try and change myself. Jesus is going to transform me. And he says this, neither circumcision or uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. He's basically saying, it's not what you can do and it's not even what you can't do. It's simply you coming and saying, right, I'm going to put my, you are, a, as a Christian, you live by faith. You are a believer. That's what he's called. Jesus says, believe in me. He didn't say to Peter and John, you know, go and fulfill all this or go and do all this. He just says, just believe in me. And I, I'm going to transform your life. I'm going to give you a brand new life. And it's not, he basically said, it's not your own effort. It's not what you can do and it's not what you can't do. It's God in his love and in his mercy and in his kindness has come to you and said, he's saying, I love you, Jesus Christ has died for you and I promise I am going to transform your life. I promise I'm going to give you new life. And your, your part is now to say, I, tr- I trust you. I trust you on that. And that's where the freedom comes because God says he will give you his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit will live inside of you and that will bear fruit inside of you. And and it doesn't matter how hard you try, you can't you can't change anything. It says there in, in four or five that what, what we do have by faith is that you receive adoption to sonship. 
Because you're his sons, God has set the spirit of his son into your heart, the spirit that calls out, Abba, Father. And it says there, by faith we receive the promise of the spirit. It's saying it's by faith. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to believe what he said. I'm going to fully rely on that. And God says, that spirit comes inside you and that spirit starts to tell you, you're a child of God. The the Holy Spirit witnesses with your spirit, says, and says, you are a child of God because because of what Jesus has done. And and, and what did you do? What did you do? You believed. That's that's your part. You just believed. You had faith. And what the problem is, the Galatians were, were putting a new management system of how that would work. And it's saying, if you're going to start just saying, well, it's all human effort, Jesus gets me out the hole and then I take over, then, then you, you, you're going to be enslaved again. But if you're going to walk in what it should be, and that's what he's bringing them to, that's what the freedom comes in. So I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep believing that Jesus is going to transform me. And it says there, um, in verse, in 220, it says, The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and and gave himself for me. And it says that, and it says there in verse 5, 6, it says the only thing that counts, and look at this, after all of the other things, they've got this whole management system, all the human effort, all these different ways of trying to, to transform themselves. And Paul just strips right back and he says, look, the only thing that counts, the only thing. You can start, you want to try and add all the sort of things, it's going to make you miserable again. If you want to say it's your own hand, your own hand will make you miserable, won't it? If my own hand's going to get me out of hole, I'm a miserable person. Because I don't know how to get myself out of holes. I don't know how to change myself. And that's what the Galatians would do. They're looking at their own hand. You, you got all this. You've got all this. And, and why do you do that? It's pride. It's um, pressure. It's the way the world works, isn't it? But it's going to, if you start doing that, if you look at your own hand, it's going to throw you into confusion about God's grace. Because you've got to completely put that aside. And he says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. He said, there's one thing that counts. And the only way to, for me to try and uh, to, to interpret that, that verse is basically like this. It's as simple as this. I trust that he loves me. I trust it. I, I take hold of Jesus and I, I just trust it. He loves me. And because he loves me, he's going to rescue me. Because he loves me, because Jesus has died on the cross and the blood has been spilled, the, the sins are going to be forgiven. And it's that faith and saying, I trust in his love. And, it, and that's, God saying, that's going to get you through. That's going to bring new life to you. Because um, the truth is, we don't, have, we don't have the power to change ourselves. Even though we want to. And our part is saying, and, and God knows that. You, he's never asked you to do that, isn't he? he in one sense, we failed that. He's, but what he has said is, I'll come and I'll rescue you. I'll be God to you. I will transform you. I will save you. And I will, and I will um, come and live inside of your heart. And in your heart, I will start saying to you, it says that the Spirit calls out Abba, Father, inside of your heart. That's, you've come into a relationship. Can't you see that? You come into a relationship and the Holy Spirit lives inside you and says, Abba, Father, God is your Father. Jesus says, when you pray, our Father. And, and it brings that freedom. Isn't, isn't it freedom? Isn't it freedom to say, God loves me. He's going to rescue me. He's going to help me. He, that's what I'm relying on. I'm relying on him saving me. I'm relying on him rescuing me. It brings such freedom into your heart, isn't it? Faith expressing itself through love. Isn't it? For God so loved the world. What's, the, what's his motivation? If you take love away from God, what have you got? Except the big guy in the sky pulling all the levers. Imagine him pulling all the levers without this love. No, you've got this love. And he's, he said, I've died for you. And you've got to, you're going to have to trust that love. You're going to have to trust that, that you can't get, your, imagine that, you can't get yourself out of the hole and you're, God's saying, I'm going to get you out because I love you. And you're going to have to trust that I love you. And he shows it, isn't it? How does he demonstrate the love? The Bible says that God demonstrates his love for us in this. That while you were still a sinner, Jesus died for you. He doesn't just say, I love you. Anybody can do that, isn't it? Cheap love. I love you, I love you, I love you. He said, I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to send my son into the world, Jesus is going to come into the world, and whilst you're in the worst place, the darkest place, he's going to demonstrate you how much he loves you, and say, I'm going to die for you, and I'm going to, and you're going to have to put your faith in me, you're going to have to 
just basically God said, just take me for my word. That's what he's saying to you. Take me for my word. I'm good for my word. I will come and give you a new life. But he says, don't go back into human effort. Don't think that you can come out the hole and trust Jesus and then all of a sudden you, you, you're going to take it over. You can't do that. It's going to bring, you're going to put the chains back on you. He said, if you want to stay free, you've got to live by faith. And when you do that, your testimony is, is going to be Jesus, isn't it? Um, and, it's, and it's an amazing experience. I remember, I heard, I heard a guy's testimony. He, he got saved and he got transformed and he preaches the gospel. And it said that somebody had found a picture of him before he became a Christian. And he, before he was a Christian, he wasn't a nice person. And he, somebody had brought, you know, I don't know why they brought it to him. I don't, he never asked for it, but they come, that was you before you were a Christian. And he said this, he said, that, that man died. I'm, and he said, I'm glad he died. I'm glad that man died. And ultimately, that's what we have to do. We have to die to our own, uh, you know, because the thing is, um, we like the challenge, isn't it? We like being able to, to be able to achieve it ourselves. Let me just, to help you, because when I was looking at this passages and thinking, God, what is it that's going on here? What is it with these Galatians? What is it with these people that tasted freedom and then go back? And let me just share quickly from my own story. And I, and I, cause sometimes I think you've gone through that yourself, but sometimes you don't even realize you've gone through it. And for me, when I became a Christian, I used, to, I used to live on the streets, I was far away from God, and then I became a Christian. And it, for me being a Christian, it was, like, it was like being shown what a Christian is. It's like, that's what it looks like. You know, the kind, they sing, they, they encourage, they do all this. And I look at that, and, and I was being like a Galatian, I look at that and think, I can do that. I can, I can do that. I can, I can be like that. And I like the challenge, isn't it? And so I said to myself, okay, I'll try and be like that. It wasn't long that I was completely miserable. There was no freedom in it. Because what I was saying, well, I'll, I'll do it all on my own effort. And that's not what God, what God wanted. And it wasn't until I got on the ground and I was crying to God. And I'm saying, I kept saying to God, God, I can't do this. I can't, do, I can't sing. I can't be nice. There's all sorts of things in my heart. I can't do this. And I, I remember feeling like God said, no, you, you can't do it. You can't do it. But he says, I can I can change you, I can transform you. And I had just made a decision that night. You know, I'd already, I'd be like the Galatians, I'd already had seen that Jesus had died for me. I was already going to church, I already had a Bible. But I was put, it was chains were all still on me. And it wasn't until that night I just said, okay God, I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna stop trying to fix myself, I'm gonna stop trying to change myself. And, I, and I'm handing it all over to you, 100%, not 90%, not 95%, I'm handing it all over to you God. You're going to take over. You're going to change me. All, all my problems are going to be your problems now. All my difficulties are your, your difficulties. This is, this, you've, you, want, you want this life? And there was no hiding now. There wasn't trying to say, I'll be like this or like that. It was just saying, Jesus, I give you everything. I, and that's the good news. I no longer live now. And ask yourself that question. Am I, am I going to do this with human? Trust me, it's going to be a big temptation. Am I going to do this with human effort or am I going to do it with faith? And I remember getting there and thinking, I'm going to trust Jesus. And he began to transform me and change me. But even now, being a Christian, what, 15 years later, I still find myself doing that. And you might find yourself doing that as a Christian. Sometimes you still do quirky little things because you think it's going to benefit you, don't you? You still put into practice little things that you think is going to help you. But ask yourself this question. Am I trying to get free by human effort or am I just going to have faith in what God has said? And that's a good test for you. So am I, is this me just trying to, to bring the blessing? Is this me trying to, to, to manufacture it all? Or am I just going to say, right, I'm just going to put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to take him at his word. I'm going to completely rely on him that he's going to... He's going to bring, because he's going to bring everything, really, isn't he? He's going to bring his presence. He's going to bring his word. He's going to bring his strength. He's going to bring his mercy. He's going to bring his goodness. If it's, if it's going to be anything, he's going to do it. What can you do anyway, other than just trust him? And so what he's saying, don't go back to the old way. Don't go back to that old way of trying to live and say, I'm just going to completely trust him, completely rely on him, and just hand it all over to him. And say, right, that's, basically, Paul said, that's me finished. 
I am finished. I no longer live. I've been crucified with Christ. He, he doesn't give it, he doesn't say, right, come back up now, Paul. He's saying, that's it, that's, that's me, I'm done. You have to be like that with yourself. He said, I'm, I'm totally giving up my, my hope of changing myself. I'm now relying on his, the hope that he brings. I'm trusting him now. You have to be like that. You have to say, it's everything now. I totally, I, have, I no longer live. And I'm completely trusting in him. And he's saying, and, and I think that's when God's saying, brilliant. I'm, Brilliant, I've got you now in that sense. I'm going to start pouring into you. I'm going to start, you're going to start feeling, and you're going to know it's done by faith. You're going to know it's done by, by trusting him. And he pours in his spirit. He pours in that life. And he begins to bring this, this new life. And I think that's why it says, in the end of Galatians, it says, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. May his help be with your spirit. May it be at that place where you really need it. Um, so let's pray now. Father God, please help us to trust you with everything, Lord God. Please help us to know it's by faith, Lord. It's by trusting in your promise to us, Lord. That's how we have the new life. Lord, we might think, well, I, it's not a challenge, Lord God, or I want to add something to that. Or that's too simple, God, but it, that's what you've said. It's by believing in the promise that you are good to your word, that you're going to save us, that you're going to rescue us, that you're going to give us the Holy Spirit because of that. You're going to give us new life. You're going to transform our minds. All because we've put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. So I pray that we, I pray that we just take you, as you at your word, Lord God. That we give up the human effort, Lord God, and, and just have faith in you. And let that freedom begin to move inside of our hearts, Lord God. Lord God, please help each person. Anybody that's struggling here tonight, Lord, that keeps trying to... They keep like going in a circle, Lord. They keep going, trying to do it, and I, get, I fail. I try to do it, and I fail. I try to do it, and I fail. I try, God, help them to get off of that. You're not asking them to try and do it. You've asked them to trust you to do it. So, Lord, help them to stop trying to do it, and help them to just to trust you to give them that new life, Lord God. And that we, we trust that you love us, that Jesus has died for us, and that his blood has been spilled, and that's enough, Lord. That's enough, Lord God. It satisfies your heart, Lord God. So please help us as a church to walk in that freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our last song together. We can stand if we're able. This song just is going over the truth we've heard again. And we can arise not in our own strength, but arise, shake off our guilty fears because Jesus has come to help us. Arise, my soul, arise, shake off your guilty fears. The bleeding sacrifice on my behalf appears. Before the throne, my surety stands. Before the throne, my surety stands. My name is written on his hand.
Arise, 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 my soul, arise, 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 my soul, arise, shake off your guilty fears and rise. We can raise our hands just to receive. What Jesus says, a very well-known verse, I think it sums up what we've heard. So from Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will Make your path straight. Amen.